in that aggravated battery conviction, the boy was beat with a pipe, an extension cord, and sticks. What could he do to deserve that kind of a whipping? I don't know because I never, I never struck any child with a pipe. Welcome to another episode of Get Your Life. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications. Okay, we, uh, good, good afternoon, Mr. Hudson. Uh, we're gonna have to ask the sergeant to turn on your, uh, your microphone. You're on mute. All right, go ahead. All right, what's your, sir, tell us your name and DOC number. Uh, my name is David Hudson and what number? What's your DOC number? Yeah, I, I hear him out the, that's the order. What's, he, he didn't have me, the mic Mr. Supporter? Mr. Lionel, you're, uh, you're on mute. Can, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. Would you tell us your name and DOC number? My name is, my name is Lionel Hudson Sr. My DOC number is 105175. Yes, sir. Let me uh, recognize that we have David Hudson, your nephew, who has joined us. He'll be, uh, he's just observing today, but he is here in support. Yes, uh, My name is Cheryl Renatza, serving as chairman of your parole panel. And my colleagues today, seated to my left, is Mr. Danny Byra, to my right, Mr. Chuck Tillis. Uh, I'm going to read some information, Mr. Hudson, ask you to confirm that information, and then we're going to conduct a parole interview. Okay. So, Mr. Lionel Hudson, you are classified as a third felony offender. You are currently serving a three-year, six-month sentence. You were uh, sentenced in Rapides Parish uh, January 18, 2023, for aggravated battery. You received three years, six months. You were sentenced for cruelty to juveniles. You were sentenced to three years, six months. And then uh, attempted indecent behavior with a juvenile, also three years, six months, and all those are running concurrently. So your total sentence is three years, six months. Your parole eligibility date is later this year, December 10th of 2024. You don't earn good time, so your full term date is October 25th of 2025. Does all that sound correct to you, sir? Yes, ma'am. So... Um, Mr. Hudson, uh, how old are you, sir? I'm 72. And how long have you been in jail on this charge, these charges? From, uh, from uh, Tuesday, April 22nd of 22 to now. So two years? About a little over two years? Yes, ma'am. So you served a little over two years of your three and a half year sentence. So this this uh, crime occurred uh, when you were sixty nine or seventy. Seventy, I think around seventy. Probably just turned seventy. Why don't you tell us what happened? Why are you in jail? Uh, I think that I got in the way of money. And, How so? Uh, man. How so? The young lady that I was with at the time uh, was a, an SSI recipient, so was I. And uh, when we met a few months later, she asked me to be her paid representative. I didn't really care to make that move. But after about six, eight months later, I, and she kept asking me, I went on and made the move because I saw that that was a misappropriation of the funds. And after I did that, Everything that the bottom fell out of everything as far as this so, situation. Yeah. And what does that have to do with uh, attempted indecent behavior with a juvenile and cruelty to a juvenile? I believe that uh, 
first of all, let me let me say this to you. I'm a, a parent of ten children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, and I've never indecent exposed, I've been indecent any child. I never abused any child. I never uh, aggravated, battered any child. I've been aggravated, battered. But I never in 72 years, man, have I ever done these things. And uh, I'm being accused for them. And because of the situation at hand for the children's sake, I didn't want them to go through all of this, running back and forth in and out of the courtrooms and, 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 and being question and dug into and all that. So I just, I play it for the child. So I uh, hear what you're saying. And I just, you know, why would a child make that allegation to their school counselor? Your question is just as heavy as mine. I asked the same question. Why? I mean, why would this come about? The children was with everybody. They was with the mother, people. They was with, uh, mostly with me and the, and the mother's people. And most of the time, I didn't very much, you know, stop them from not seeing the people. Or, or it wasn't my place to stop them. But I feel that when they made this move on this, on this SSI, and I believe they used the children, these folks used the children to get what to get me where I am. I don't understand that. Well, I understand that. How does that benefit anybody? Well, they got the money. Got rid of me, and they got the money. Right. You know, what you're saying uh, is certainly uh, not, doesn't jive with what's in the record that we're looking at. Uh, I, you know, I have concerns about you. Let me tell you what I wrote on my, uh, on my, aside from this conviction, you know, how many times would you say you've been arrested, Mr. Hudson? Ma'am. How many times would you say you've been arrested? I couldn't recall 15, 20 times different little infractions. Yeah, I counted 48. Does that sound right to you? Could be. Lots of uh, you know, drug charges, many, many, many worthless checks. It seemed like that, that you're the one that had an issue with money. Worthless checks, numerous occasions. I will say this, that uh, I have noted in the record that um, you have done some programming. In April of this year, you did the 100 hours completed, rather, the pre-release, one and two. Yes, ma'am. have lots of support uh, in the record. You have your brother, David, who's here with us today, uh, asking. I, he seems to be a little confused. He's asking for a pardon, but we're here for a parole hearing today. Um uh, we have from your sister-in-law, Miss Betty, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Clifton Pryor, your pastor uh, from the detention center, uh, and others. So we do, we do, you do have a lot of support in the record. Yes, ma'am. We do have opposition also. We have uh, your sentencing judges opposed, the district attorney's office is opposed, the police chief in Alexandria is opposed. Um, why do you think we should give you consideration for early release? I think that I deserve a chance to go back, not to go back from where I came from, but to start from here and to look forward and to setting a, a, a better format for my life. I have an eight-year-old son out there 
me. So I need to make a home for a good human party to stay in there and educate him for the little time that whatever God has for me left here on this earth to uh, have that chance and the opportunity to do it for him and as well for myself. From this point on, not from the back side of the matter, from this point forward. Yes, sir. I don't have any other questions. Uh, any questions, Mr. Byron? Yeah. The uh, three victims in this case, what's your relation to them? Are you related to them? No, sir. Uh, they, were, they were the children of my, uh, at the time, of my fiance. All three of them? All, all three of them, yes. Uh, two boys and a girl. And uh, there, were, there were five. And only one of them was mine. The baby boy was mine. But uh, the rest of them, I was, I'm the only father that they know because the father's <clears throat> passed away and some of them. Are. The nine-year-old boy that was the victim of the aggravated battery, is, is that your son or is that her son? Mm -hmm. The aggravated battery was... Nine-year-old boy, initials R.J. Her son? No, uh, nine years old. Randall is 20. Back, back then, I guess, or 19 years old. 19, I'm sorry. 19, yeah. He's, uh, that's Randall Jones. That's, uh, how old, that's her oldest son. All right. And it, the police report says that due to, in that aggravated battery conviction, the boy was beat with a pipe, an extension cord, and sticks. What could he do to deserve that kind of a whipping? I don't know because I never, I never struck any child with a pipe and an They're extension not sure or a stick. I've never done it, but I can't understand why that would even come up. I think I do understand it because they wanted me out of the way. If you saw these children. Then, uh, sir, if you saw any of those children then, the children was well taken care of, they were well manicured, they had hair cuts, and the girls had hair, hairs done. They were taken care of. I, I managed to work with this young, with this young man, my, my son, I call it. I got him through high school, got him a high school diploma. I worked with him through uh, ROTC. I worked with him through basketball games, he'd come out of school with a high school diploma with honors, and he's a kid of special needs. All of these children and all, all of them we took care of, and we didn't take care of them with pipes and sticks and extension cords. I'm 72, the youngest of 10, and I've never been hit with an extension cord. So I don't know why that that would come up in the way I do. I was in the way of something, money. Here oh. I am. And all right. Got Basically, <laughs> you're pretty much in denial of all of the charges that, that you are convicted of. None of them you did. And I'm looking at the, the bill, the bill of information that was filed in the uh, attempted indecent behavior with a juvenile. You originally billed with second degree rape that got reduced to attempted indecent behavior with a juvenile. Just say that to point out that what you didn't do was pretty serious. Uh, tell us how how are we to think that after you had an arrest record with 40 something arrests for all kinds of different crimes, why would the board believe that you could change this behavior now? I know you're 72 and you're getting up there, but just, just give us something where we can, you know, feel it a little bit for you because I'm not feeling it right now. I had, uh, from that, from the time I was in the system before up to now, serve 38 years. Uh, 
I haven't written a hot check in 40 years. We grew from that because it wasn't a thing that I was so much in need. I was just young and, and stupid at the time. And I grew beyond that part, that state of my life. There, any other part of it, I've grown beyond the states of that person. And I believe and I feel beyond any shadow of a doubt in my heart. And I'm no longer that, that person that did those things, wrote those checks, drove the car without the driver's license, had the, the drugs, had that. I, I don't do any of that. I've been, I've been pretty much clear and level headed up until this last matters that have taken place here now, that I'm here for now. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Hudson, anything else you want to say to us? No, ma'am, I think that's all I need to say. I think we are prepared to vote, uh, Mr. Hudson, and I'll be voting first. You know, I, I hear everything you're saying, and I hear your allegations that this had to do somehow with money, but it's, it's just, uh, we, we do have information that from the current caregiver of the children, that they are well, minors at least. There's, you know, I think, they're still minors. Are still suffering from whatever occurred in that household. Um, you know, the, the information that we have here, there is some evidence of. There was an arrest in 2000 for uh, simple battery. There's another prior arrest for aggravated battery. I just uh, find the evidence in the record overwhelming. And you got a, sh a short sentence. You have a, a full term date coming up in October of next year. You seem to be doing well. You're at um, based on the opposition that I see in the record that I've mentioned to you. My vote today is going to be to deny you parole, Mr. Barra. I concur with Mr. Knotts. I, I vote to deny the parole based on the seriousness of this crime committed on three separate victims, the strong victim and law enforcement opposition, and a lack of programming while you've been incarcerated. Mr. What's the Jones. lack of programming? You haven't attended a whole lot of treatment classes or things like that. I've, I've attended all the classes that they have here. Then we're voting. Oh, I'm sorry. I concur. All right. Um, so today, Mr. Hudson, your parole has been denied. I would strongly recommend that you inquire there at the facility about victim awareness class. If they offer it, you should take it. Good luck what, to you, sir. What, what's the name of it? That concludes victim awareness. That concludes uh, our business uh, at in Rapids Parish. We're going to adjourn. It's one forty-three. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so that you know when I post the next video. Thanks for watching.